It looks like there's trouble on the horizon for crypto exchange Huobi, but in all honesty, it really comes down to, does it really matter if you just would have done this one thing? So there's an ongoing story. This is about uh, Huobi, uh, the crypto exchange. And it looks like their reserves are down 30% amid reports of the top executives being arrested by the Chinese government. And it looks like uh, they have withdrawn or uh, people have withdrawn almost 45 million in stable coins during the last week. And of course, this is going to happen as people, they hear negative news, they don't like that news, they start to have a run on the bank as it were, they start to withdraw most of their funds. And this whole article just talks about that in, in excess and about how much there actually is and people are you know, taking a run on the bank and everybody's panicking. And then one of these things that you're always gonna always hear about is, well, if this is really true, is it true or is somebody just spreading FUD like Rob at Digital Asset News? And in all honesty, I took a look at uh, the, the piece, the article. This is from uh, Tech Hub News. And uh, it was, in, I believe, in Mandarin. And I had to translate it. And it says pretty much the exact same thing this article states over on this one. And where it's just like, this guy knows a guy who knows a guy who heard that these executives got uh, arrested. That's not really that great of information. However, if we do look over at Twitter, you start to see some patterns. This is Justin Sun. He's one of the big advisors over there at Huobi. Also for Tron fame, he says, ignore the FUD, keep building. Tron and Obi will thrive through continuous development, trust in our vision and community efforts for a stronger future, which sounds very compelling, quite honestly. And then, of course, Huobi puts out this article about, don't worry about it. There's no FUD, there's no problems. And, of course, we've seen this before, have we not? We've heard about this from the exchange, from the people in charge of the exchanges, and we're like, we don't believe you. And with pretty good rationales. However, I need to ask you just one question. What does it matter? What does it matter if these crypto exchanges do fold up? Because there's these rules I think we should all have learned by now, right? The rules that are underneath my big, enormous head, where it says, number one, it's all gone. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. 100% scams. Everything's a scam until proven otherwise. Don't leave anything on exchanges, period. Because there are prone to things like this. And of course, don't use leverage. I'm not a big leverage person. You can do what you want to do and take profits along the way. So again, when I see these articles and people are like, oh, you're spreading FUD, you're spreading FUD. Look, there shouldn't be any FUD. There shouldn't be any issues because in all honesty, you shouldn't leave anything on exchanges. And we all know that, do we not? Anyhow, let me just think about that in the uh, comment section. Also, I find this an amusing story and kind of good, kind of bad. Curve. So Curve had a hack last week, Curve Finance. They have over $3 billion in uh, liquidity and assets. And they're offering uh, almost $2 million reward to identify the hacker. I find this very odd because the hacker's already given back roughly 73% of everything that was taken. So I don't understand why they're offering $1.85 million, other than the fact that I guess this, this person, this guy, this lady, this group, they only gave back 73% when they said, hey, we'll give it all back or we'll just keep the bounty, they, they just didn't do it. So according to PeckShield, 73% of stolen funds worth about 52 million have been returned as of today. And this is where it gets interesting. Following the incident, the attacker issued an on-chain message maintaining that their decision to return the stolen assets was motivated by a desire not to inflict additional damage on the involved projects. Well, that's nice, a hacker with a heart. And this is what he states. I saw some ridiculous views. So I want to clarify that I'm refunding you, not because you can find me, it's because I don't want to ruin your project. Kind of, you know, a little late, but whatever. Maybe it's a lot of money for a lot of people, but not for me. I'm smarter than all of you. And I gotta tell you, that's a pretty ballsy statement for a guy who's got a 2 million bounty on his head, but we'll see how it all plays out. I find this interesting, and this is just how it's gonna be moving forward. We're going to see more hacks and more issues as we stumble forward into mass adoption, and DeFi is no exception. However, there's also some other good news on the horizon, which is the story that pretty much everybody and their mother's talking about today, which is PayPal. So PayPal just came out and said, hey, we're going to do a stable coin. It's called PayPal USD or PYUSD. And we're going to open this up in the American markets. Now, they don't have any listings on exchanges because it just started today. You'll probably be able to use this on, on DeFi protocols, but no exchanges that I know of right now have been used. And this is, again, only in America. But I found this very interesting that here's the contract address, 0XE17B, and then it ends in 126E. 
And it was started about 10 and a half hours ago. This is the one that actually was created. All right, good job, PayPal. And then it looks like uh, they, this is another transaction here. And they tried to transfer from one wallet into the actual contract, 0XE, 126E. And unfortunately, uh, they were out of gas. So I don't know if PayPal is aware of just how expensive uh, Ethereum gas fees are, but welcome to Ethereum and the wonderful world that it is, PayPal. We're glad that you showed up. And then also, I found this interesting as well. This is a, a nice little piece, because I thought, well, if PayPal is gonna do this and they have their own stable coin, and they have BUSD and you have Tether, how's this gonna affect all these different stable coins? And even like Circle with USDC. So this is an article from The Block, and this is from uh, Paolo Ardoño, nailed it. He is the CTO of Tether, and he says, we don't expect any impact on USDT uh, because PayPal has been launched in the US where Tether does not serve. I found this interesting. Maybe I'm not understanding the context, but uh, I've bought Tether many a time on Coinbase. I bought it on Kraken, and uh, I'm an American citizen. I'm not using some crazy wacky VPN, and uh, I can still use Tether and use it uh, every other place. So I'm not for sure what that uh, is, is uh, alluding to, but uh, I can just tell you that as an American citizen, I can buy Tether on American exchanges. And it goes on to further state, it's interesting, another stable coin in the US, it could lead to the erosion of revenues for payments that have been mainly fueling MasterCard and Visa. Let me tell you something, they are correct. I, I wholeheartedly hope that actually happens. MasterCard and Visa uh, have a stranglehold on all of us, especially for my businesses, for all the different transactions I have to do. And that is very true. Unfortunately, the problem with that is that MasterCard and Visa are still low in transaction fees. Unfortunately, this ERC-20 token for PayPal, it's on Ethereum. And if we go to bitinfocharts.com, I'll link in the description. I'm just gonna look at the last six months, not over the last bull market. We can see that just in March, I mean, we had an average transaction fee of $1.72 for Bitcoin. That's pretty good. And Ethereum, almost $16. Now coming down here, not too bad, $5, Four dollars, that's pretty good. 354, and then backed up to five and six. Somewhere around here, it's gonna hit seven or so. Five, six, seven, eight, 16. Then we go up to here, part $27 for an Ethereum average transaction fee. Yeah, that's right. So right now, I mean, it's a nice dream for Ethereum to do that. I think layer two solutions would be just fine. XRP would be a pretty good option in that case also as well. And of course, Bitcoin Lightning and every other crypto that's out there that you hold that I didn't mention is gonna be awesome. Uh, but as far as like Ethereum layer one, I just don't see that happening for transaction fees. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comments. And then to finish up, I'm feeling pretty good lately about the market itself. This is uh, Ben site, use it a lot. And uh, I like this part here where it just gives you like a summary of price metrics, on-chain and social. And you can take a look at total market cap risk, Bitcoin risk, fear and greed index. Uh, the on-chain metrics looks at the MVRBZ score, 12 multiple transaction fees. And then social is all like YouTube views and Twitter followers. And just kind of condenses it into one summary. And right now it's relatively safe-ish if you're investing into a crypto market that is the most volatile market uh, in existence so far. <laughs> so when I see this, I'm like, this is not a bad time to dollar cost average. And actually I just added uh, another image from Aurelian Ohion. This is in the four year cycle risk bands, link in the description, you can find this, this piece here. And it lays it out very nicely actually. And you can see that, you know, the bear markets are, you know, two years prior to the halving, or actually, it's actually just one year after the, after the all-time high. Of course, 2010 doesn't exist, but. So 2010, 11, 12 was a halving, 13. And they, they break it down by bear, pre-bull, and first bull and second bull. It's all the same things we know. I just thought it was an interesting way to look at things. Right now, look at 2011, 15, and 19. I like the look of this because you can see like towards the end of the year, it kind of starts to go up a little bit. 2019, it still, it goes down a little, but it's still looking pretty good and flat in the 2020 halving and really, really drove down, unfortunately because of COVID, but then it really took on a rip and a tear. Same thing in 2016, same thing in 2012 and the bear market. So right now I think it's a pretty good time. Is there a recession in the, uh, in the cards? Yeah, maybe, who knows, but I don't, but remember recessions don't last forever. Bear markets don't last forever, neither do bull markets. So I take a look at this, I'm feeling you know reasonably good about what's happening in our crypto space. I feel like the time is, is uh, coming soon, we'll, we will say. And one of the things I need to 
to talk to you and try to get in your head is that this is that the next bull run, I think Bitcoin will do great. L1s will do fine. L2s will do really great. But I'm really, really under the impression that we're going to do a lot of, of play to earn or the gaming aspect, and that'll lead a lot of things. And you don't have to invest into, of course, the actual projects that are out there, but just pay attention to where all the different gaming play to earn, play to win, play to whatever uh, are actually being built on what rails. Are they building everything on Avalanche? Are they building everything on Near? Are they building everything on Polygon or Ethereum? Just take a look at that because you don't have to decide all those things. You just say, well, all these rails are being built on one thing. And there was a great uh, Twitter Spaces. I'll link it in, in the description. It was with uh, Animoca Brands co-founder Yatsu. It talked about crypto gaming heating up. And it was a really good talk about where things are going and why it's going to do pretty well. Also, I had Yat uh, on the show almost two weeks ago now. And he did the, probably the best breakdown I've ever heard of Web3 digital property and why it's going to be so huge. So I'll link that in the description. You can check it out. This would be the, the one to check and, of course, the Twitter spaces. But I think that'll be big, but we'll see. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive, especially as we go into the Bitcoin halving, which we got about eight and a half months or so. That's it for today. Thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate you, and I'll see you on the next one.